don't last always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Trouble don't last always. If you could just hang on in there just a little bit longer. Hallelujah. Daybreak is around the corner. Hallelujah. Trouble don't last always. It may feel like it when you're in the midst of it, but trouble don't last always. It may seem like it when you look to your right or to your left, but trouble don't last always. My God said if you just trust him, if you just wait on him, things will change. Hallelujah. 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 See, I don't know about you today, but I got a reason to praise my God today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Trouble don't last always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, joy comes in the morning time. Hallelujah. 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 I see you don't know like I know. When I look right over there, I can think of the goodness of God and all that he's done. Hallelujah. I got a reason to shout. I got a reason to praise my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because what the enemy thought he had. Around. I'm the one who holds life and death in the power of my hand. Hallelujah. 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 See, there was a town. I was in I met my sister Parker. She'll stand up and she'll sing that song. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. If I fight. If I die, let me die, but I'm dying on the battlefield for my Lord. See, I feel like singing this song, but I can't sing, so I'm just going to praise him where I want to sing. Because I feel today is a day to shout out and rejoice. It's a day to lift up holy hands. It's a day to thank you for what he's doing. It's a day to thank you for where he's taking you. Because some of you shouldn't have been here today, but God has blessed you to be here in the building. Hallelujah. 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 Because when you look back over your life and see where you came from, you should rejoice like never before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. is the goodness of God yes, 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 yes. and all he's done for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all can have a seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 See, I thank God for this opportunity because some of us, you don't get that opportunity to share God's word. So every chance you get an opportunity, you need to praise him. You need to share what he has laid on your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know they say it's Mother's Day, but for me, it's a homecoming celebration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God. Hallelujah. But it's a beautiful Mother's Day. See, God bless me on this Mother's Day. I don't have one mother, two mothers. I have three mothers. Hallelujah. I got one sitting right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got one that's in St. Paul. Hallelujah. And I got one that's in heaven. Hallelujah. So see, I thank God on Mother's Day. Hallelujah. Because God has blessed me. Hallelujah. More than I could ever ask. Hallelujah. I thank God for all the familiar faces that I see. Like I said to me, this is a homecoming service and a Mother's Day service. I thank God that I got my cousin sitting right there that came out and heard the word, thank you for coming out. Hallelujah. I thank God for all the friends and family. I thank those, God for those who are online who could not make it today. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I don't know if y'all know my story, but I really call this my home because I grew up at a church called St. Matthew. And the biggest thing there was become the Sunday school superintendent. 
in my eyes because my granddaddy and my grandmother was the Sunday school superintendent. I didn't care about being called in the ministry. I just wanted to be the Sunday school superintendent. All right. And I want to say today, the leader of this house at that moment, Pastor Whitfield, he called me by his bedside while he was in rehab. He said, sis, I want you to be the Sunday school superintendent. Uh, I don't know if you know what it feels like. That joy just bubbled up because I felt, I said, you know, I did my grandmother proud because I followed in her footsteps. And I just praise God for everyone that we touched while we was here. It was a beautiful time. And God, as the Sunday school superintendent, there's my assistant sitting back there, Deacon Davis. And I just praise God for everything that we learned and lived during that time. I just thank God for that. Hallelujah to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Well, I bring you greetings today from Redeeming Love Family Church. Our pastors, Pastor R.T. McKinney and First Lady Louisa McKinney here in Fayetteville. I give greetings to the angel of this house and his beautiful wife. Hallelujah. I thank God for you. Hallelujah. I thank God for the women who invited me out that y'all thought enough of me to say, come on out and share the word. Amen. 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 So I ain't going to be before you long. God gave me a word. I got a word for you that I want to share with you. Amen. 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 First, let me just open up in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you right now. Lord, I praise you. I magnify you, God, on this Mother's Day. God, I thank you, Lord, that you woke us up this morning. God, I thank you, Lord, that you gave us a desire to hear your word. God, I pray, Lord, that I decrease and you increase in me and you take over. You touch everyone that needs to be touched, Lord, that they do not leave out of here the same way. God, I thank you, Lord, for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So if you could stand with me. I think he said he's going to put my scriptures on the up on the uh, screen. We're going to read from 1 Corinthians 13th chapter, 4th to the 7th verse. And our second set of scriptures will be John 19th chapter, 25th through the 27th verse. Say amen when you have it, and we're going to be coming from a uh, King James Version. Amen. amen. And the scripture reads, Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not, charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, do not behave itself unseemingly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, Thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. And now John 19, chapter 25th to the 27th verse. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. We can all have a seat. So if you need for a title today, the title of this message is Behold a Love Story. Behold a Love Story. And when God began to give me this message, I was like, Lord, that's an Easter scripture. And Lord said, no, just listen to the love story. Behold a Love Story. And if you will allow me, I want to read uh, 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 7 from the Message Bible, because I want you to hear it with a different clarity in there. And it says, love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others. It's 
isn't always me first. Doesn't fly off the handle. Doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Doesn't revel when others grovel. Take pleasure in the flowering of truth. Puss up with anything. Trust God always. Always look for the best. Never look back. But keep going to the end. Behold a love story. So on this Mother's Day, I want to speak to you about love and the power of love. Behold a love story. And as I had said before, a few years ago, I took the, the Lord, he just touched my heart to move to D.C., let it all go, move in with my mother to take care of my mom. And I don't know how many of you know what it's like to take care of a person with dementia, but it's nothing you ever expected. Love cares more for others than for self. Isn't always me first. Trust God always. Always look for the best. Behold a love story. And when I got there, it was like, wait a minute. This ain't what I expected. Because I realized at that moment that the love it would require was a love I didn't feel I had. Behold a love story. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Doesn't revel when others grovel. So as the Lord began to take me through the process of learning to love her like never before, I learned how to love myself. Behold a love story. Now, as we look at this love story right here, it takes place at the foot of the cross, where Jesus is therefore demonstrating his love for us. Yeah. Behold, a love story. Because he love cares more for others than for self. We're going to move on to act one of that love story. It says, now therefore stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. Act 1, when Jesus therefore saw his mother. When Jesus therefore saw his mother. I can't even imagine what that day was like. We know the story quickly. Jesus was, had been betrayed by one of his own. He had been convicted of crimes he didn't commit. He had been chosen to be crucified by the people. He had been beaten, a crown of thorns placed on his head, beard plucked. People laughed at him, spit at him, nails in his hand and feet hanging on the cross yeah, in agony. Yeah, yeah. But he saw All right now. his mother. Yeah. Some of us doing fine and ain't saw our mother. Come on. He saw his mother. Now the word for, the word for saw here is the Greek word Areho. It means to see with the eyes, to see with the mind, to perceive, and to know. Yes, yes. He saw his mother. On that cross, he saw her. He looked at her with the inner of his heart. He knew her on that cross. Yes. He perceived what she needed. All right. See, it's not enough to see somebody and keep going. Come on, come on. Come on. But you got to see them, know there's a need there, and take action. Yeah. Act one of the love story. Behold a love story. So at that moment, with his physical eyes, he perceived, perceived Mary had a need. This woman that he knew, we may say, well, you know, she understood what was going on. But at that moment, that was a mother who had raised the child, she gave him birth. He became a toddler. He became a young child. He became a man, a boy, a man, an adult. That was her baby. Yes. 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 So at that moment, on that cross, she looked at him and everything he was going through, and he looked at her and knew everything she was going through, and he said there is action that need to be taken. Yes. Behold a love story. She, he knew his mother loved him. He knew his mother had nurtured him. Yet he understood his mission. 
And at that moment, he felt so low, he was even saying, Father, Father, why has thou forsaken me? But yet and still I see my mother. Behold, a love story. He knew that Mary was willing to let him go in time to let him go. He knew Mary stayed in the background and prayed. She kept things in her heart. She was never in the street. That's my son. He's the Savior. No, he understood. She understood. Behold, a love story. And there's something about a mother and a child. That bond is never broken. That word mother can never be erased from you. No matter what. So as he on that cross looking down on that woman that knew that there was a bond that was there that could never be broken no matter what, he had to take action. Behold, a love story. So all of a sudden he began to put that love into action. Behold, a love story. Love to me is not seeing, but taking. Hallelujah. So then we move on to act two when it's a woman. Behold thy son. Now if you look up the Greek word for behold, that Greek word is adu. And you know what it means? It means to see. So the same action that Jesus had did upon Mary and saw his mother, now he's telling his mother, I want you to see your son. I want you to perceive who he is. I want you to understand who he is. I don't want you to understand what he's going to need in this season. That's what I want you to do. I want you to see him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which means that she, he wanted her. He said, I want you to see him. I want you to know he's going to need somebody. Because you got to think about John was a man of love. He would love Jesus. He laid his head on his breast. He was right there in the inner part. And I don't care when you are close to someone that someone is gone, there's an emptiness in your life. Yes. That's why he said, woman, behold thy son. And I'm going to look at a couple of characteristics of John and why Mary needed to be in John's life. Because, see, John was a man of love. John was going to need somebody that knew how to love. And it's not enough to know how to love, but you got to know how to give love and receive love. John was a person that understood love. He knew how to give it. He knew how to receive it. He was so humble, he called himself the one that Jesus loved. He didn't even puff his own self up. He was in the inner circle. He got to see things, but he never ran out and like, guess what I saw? but I'm just going to stay here and pray. Jesus knew when he had to go through his roughest time who he needed right by him that could pray, that could stand by him. That's the kind of man that John was. See, when God knows you need something, he don't just give you anything. He said, I'm going to give you my best. He said, right now my best is John. See, he could have handed his mother over to anyone at any time because he knew what was coming for. But in this season, he said, I know what my mother's going to need. I know the person that my mother's going to need. I know she's going to need a man named John. She's going to need a man to understand love. She's going to need a man that laid his head on my breast. She's going to need a man that stood beside me. She's going to need a man that was brave enough to stand here at this cross. When the other 10 or 11 was gone, he was right here at the foot of the cross. He's going to need a man that knew to go to the, with him to the Mount of Transfiguration but just stood there and prayed with him. He's going to need a man that's going to be there to the very end. A man of love. That's what he, she was going to need in her life. There are so many of us today, we don't understand there's a hole in our life and we don't know what we need. Some say, well, I need a better job, I need money, I need a car, I need a husband. No, you just need love. Yes. Behold, a love story. Yes. God said, and that's all you need today is a love story. Yes. Act three. And he tells her, he says, woman, Son, behold your mother. Yeah, yeah. And I know so often we get caught up in that Mary needed John. John needed Mary, Mary needed John. Both needed each other for what God knew they were going to be going through. 
So often in our lives, we think that people need us, but we don't realize we need those people yeah. in our lives to yeah. bring us forth. That every person that you meet is nothing more than a foundation for the step that you're going to have in the word of God. Everyone, everyone that he puts in your life, there is a purpose for them. Every situation that he puts there, there is a person. You're going to either grow from it, you're going to learn from it, you're going to run from it, you're going to dig with it, you're going to get out of it, you're going to pass it by, or you're going to go back to it, you're going to take hold of it, or you're going to throw it away. But everybody and everything that comes in your life has a purpose. Behold, Amen. Amen. a love story. Amen. And John, Mary, God knew, Jesus knew, he said, now John, he is a lover. Amen. If you look at his bio, the books he wrote, every book he wrote was about love, the power of love. If you don't receive love, sometimes it's hard to talk about love. Amen. If you don't get someone in your life that can show you love, you get confused at what love is. Come on, come on. Somebody may come into your life and throw some things at you and you think that's what love is. No, that's not what love is. Mm -hmm. But he knew who John had to become. So he said, I got to put a person in his life. That's a person of love. Now I'm going to look at Mary just a little bit and see who she was, why she was a woman of love that he chose her to be in John's life for what John was going to go through. First thing about Mary I noticed is Mary knew when to hold on and when to let go. When we come up in, the Bible, in, the, in Luke, we look at where he talked about when Jesus was 12 years old and he was left at the temple. And when Mary went back, he was there at the temple teaching, talking, Sounded wisdom. Yes. And Mary had to ask him, what sorrow do you bring upon us? And he's like, don't you know I must be about my father's business? Yes. Yes. How you seek me? I'm at my father's business. And they understood not what he was saying, but it said he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. In other words, I don't care how wise they may sound at a time, a child still needs to be mothered. Yeah, uh -huh. So many of us, so often, we like, oh, they sound wrong, let them go. You got to seek the wisdom of God Amen. to know when to let your child go, yeah. when to hold on to them, when to be that parent, yeah. when to dig into their lives, when to stay close to them, when to let it go. At that time, Mary was like, it is not the time. I understand but it's not the time. So he went back and he was subject to her. But then when we go a little farther, we see whenever he came, him and his brother looking for her and his brother looking for Jesus. And he said, who is my mother and my father? Mm -hmm. But he that is due to do the will of the father. Yeah, yeah. And Mary moved on. Mm -hmm. That's what we gotta understand as parents that when you are a parent, when you love your child, it says, train him up in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart. Yes. But you got to understand that you got to have faith in the training if you've trained them in the Word of God. Right. You got to know that there's a time I'm going to hold on, there's a time I'm going to let go. Yes. There may be times your child may be a little older than someone else's child, and it may not be time to let that child go. But you got to trust in the wisdom of God and be like Mary and know, okay, now it's time for you to stay subject to me. And now it's time for me to move on and to let you go. Amen. Amen. Another thing I love about Mary is Mary was a mother that knew how to push her son into his destiny. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. And we look at that scripture when it talks about the first miracle that Jesus did when he turned the water into wine. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You see, Jesus had a plan. Jesus had a smart plan. He knew first I got to get baptized. I got to go be tempted. I got to get some followers to understand who I am so that when I go, they can continue to go on and take the word. I got to make sure they know who I am, and then I can show them some power, some miracles. 
Because see, so many of us, we get caught up and we get some blessings. We like, oh, I just want to show everybody how I can bless. They don't care who you are. They're not seeking to invest. Their only thing is, I just want to follow you for the fishes and the loaves. But Jesus said, no, I got a plan. I have a time, a timeline. I want you to know who I am. So when I say, who do men say that I am? But who do you say that I am? That you will know who I am beyond a shadow of a doubt. That when I leave this earth, that you'll be able to walk with assurance and know who I am. That you'll be able to go out and lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And you will understand the power. That you will know that I was a word made flesh and I dwelt amongst you. You will know that I am the word. You will know that I am the vine. You know that I am the water. I am the bread of life. Hallelujah. I tell you what, the miracles can come and go, but to know who he is means more than anything. Yes. A miracle won't get you into heaven, but the word of God will. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. So Jesus knew, what was my time and yet? I got a timeline I got to do. So these people understand who I am. But yet still Mary. Mary said, listen. I know God. I know Jesus. I know what being filled with the Holy Ghost can do for you. I understand what the power of the Holy Spirit is. She, I guess she began to look back and she began to think about Elijah. And she began to say, well, I know that Elijah was filled with the Spirit. That Elijah, he went and he talked to the lady about the oil and the flour. And he said, look, just give me a little and it'll never run out. I know he talked about Elijah and how he went and told the woman, just go get some jars and pour them with some oil. It'll never run out. I guess she began to look and say, I know about a man named Moses who just put a stick in the water and the water became sweet. So I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know how it's going to be. But whatever he tells you to do, you listen to him. Because I understand the power of the Holy Ghost. I understand the power of the Spirit of God. See, so many of us, we are blessed with the Spirit and we don't understand it. We don't know what to do with it. We don't know how to walk into it. But Mary, she says, I know that when you are filled, things happen. So whatever my son say do, then that's what you do. And she went on about her business. Mary, John needed a mother who would push him into his destiny. And we got so many children in here that are so blessed, that are sitting back and all they need is just that little push to say, you can do it. All right. yeah. You uh -huh. got this. Yeah. Just move on in it. All but right. yet and still, we sitting back and half of us are more afraid than the kids are. You got to stand just like Mary and know, say, you know what? God, you gave me this child. You said you knew her in my womb. You said that you have blessed her. You said you know the plans that you have laid for her. So therefore, child, go forth. And know that 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 God has given you, step into it. Step into your destiny. Walk into what God has given you. Trust him in all you do. Lean not to your own understanding, but trust in his word. Mary knew how to push her son into his destiny, and John was going to need that someone who could push him whenever things got rough. Whenever he was going to find himself on the Isle of Patmos, he needed someone that was going to stand there by him. Another thing about Mary, Mary was there to the bitter end. As they may say, but I call it the sweet end. Mary was there. I don't know if I could be sitting there at the foot of that cross watching my son being beaten and bruised. I know that was her. But Mary, she was like, that's my baby. That's my child. I will be with him from now on. I don't know, he didn't talk about how she knew, but all she knew was on this day, my child was hanging on a cross and he needed to see my face. All he knew was at this moment, he needs to know that I love him. He needs to know that I support him. He needs to know that I understand the ministry that I have. He needs to know that I am here no matter what. He needs to know that I myself would never leave him or forsake him. He needs to know that I 
love him like oh, never yeah. before. He needs yeah. to know that he may be the son of the most high God, but he's my son too. Yeah. He Thank needed to know that in that season. Because like he said, he didn't know if he had no friends. He looked around all the people that he had healed. Where was they at at that moment? Where was the woman with the issue of blood? Where was the woman by the well? Where was the man who he had lifted up? Hallelujah. Where's the one he said, take up your bed and walk? Where's the one that had been blinded and he got helped him to see? Where's that? I don't know where they at. Where are my other disciples that was with me, that said they know me, that said they'll never leave me? Where were they? I don't know where they were, but I know who was there, and that is my mother. She is there at the foot of the cross, right there, standing in the gap for me, praying, knowing that I am thirsty, Know that I feel like everyone has forsaken me in the name of Jesus, knowing I got the world on my shoulders. That's who John was going to need. That's who he was going to need to write the book of Revelation. And that's why he put her in his life to teach him all these things. The feeling of love, the feeling of loyalty, the feeling of know that I'll be there when no one else is there. Hallelujah. That was act three of a love story. And now it's time for you to start your love story. Yes. It's time for you to start your love story. Yes. And I know a whole lot of us right now, we're at the beginning of that love story where we're saying, Jesus, do you see me? A lot of us are sitting right there and in our bedroom, in our closet, we're saying, Jesus, do you see me? Jesus, do you see what I'm going through? Jesus, do you feel my pain? Jesus, do you know I'm hurting right now? Jesus, do you know what I need? Well, I'm here to tell you that he says, I see you, my child. I see you, my child. I love you, my child. I got everything you need. See, I will provide all your riches according to my riches and glory. I am your healer. I am your deliverer. I am your burden bearer. I got everything you need. I see you when no one else see you. I see the tears that you shed. I say, if you just lean on me, I give you joy like never before. If you wait on me, I give you strength. Hallelujah. God says, don't worry about it no more. Don't cry no more. He sees you the same way he saw his mother, and he's got everything you need. You just got to trust him, believe him, know that he has it all in control. I don't care what it feels like. I don't care what it looks like. I'm praying today that you put on some spiritual glasses, and you see you got a father that will give you whatever you need. He sees you. And not only do he see you the same way he put Mary in John's life and John in Mary's life, he's putting someone in your life right now. That'll do it, that'll be there for what you need on this earth. That's the kind of God he is. Some of us, he's already put those people in our lives, but we the one that are pushing them away. Well, it's so we like, I don't know, that's what I want. But trust me, even in the pain, even sometimes our children go through things and we feel the pain. And I've seen people like, well, her child don't do that and his child don't do that. But trust me, if God put that child in your life, he needs you, you need him. Yes. Right. Uh -huh. yes. Come on. Yes. That you can learn patience. Thank you, Lord. Right now. That you can yes. learn love. Say that, preacher. That you can be like and say, love is not selfish. Yeah. Uh -huh. Love does not see itself. Yes. Behold a love story. And that's what God wants you to know today. That he loves you. He sees you. Yes. He's making appointments in your life. He knows what you Thank need, you, where yes. you're going. He yes. sees a whole lot farther than we do. Yes. Yes. When I made that trip to D.C., I didn't see what I needed to see. I thought I knew how to love. But to love a person that physically can't love you back, that's love. Yeah. That's love. To say I love you and know that person can't say it back, yeah. that's love. Yeah. Yeah. To give from the bottom of your heart, uh -huh. that's love. 
And that's what God wants us to know on this month with him. Amen. Behold a love story. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Now, if some of you in here, you haven't even began your love story. You don't even understand the power of who God is and how much he loves you and how much he wants to be there for you. Today, on Mother's Day, you know what a beautiful gift that is? To say, God, I choose you. I want to begin my love story. I want to feel the power of your love like never before. I want to know that you care about me, that you love me for who I am, just as I am. Because the world sometimes wants you to become somebody else before they love you. But he says, I will love you just as you are. I will take you just as you are. I will raise you just as you are. I would change your heart. I would change your mind. I would clean up all of the darkness. And I would make it light. I would give you joy, unspeakable joy. So today, if you're in the building and you don't know him as your Savior, and you want to know this love that we're talking about, the altar is open. The altar is open that you can begin your love story. The altar is open, and some of you, you might have began your love story, and you've fallen away, and you don't feel that love. The altar is open. The altar is open. All you have to do is say, God, Jesus, I want to feel your love. I want to know that you see me. I want to know that you care. The altar anyone needs prayer today for anything, the altar is open. If anyone needs prayer for anything, the altar, is it okay? The altar is open if anyone needs prayer on today. Amen. 